forever. Like the Harlem Globetrotters beat the Washington Generals like 697 times to none. <laughs> right. Like, I, I don't even remember what the odds were. And we actually did this little thing. And me and my brother actually did this thing for ESPN called You Can't Blame uh, Mike Tyson for Losing to Buster Douglas. So ESPN had this thing where they did, um, you know, several different, like, I guess, upsets in sports history. And it was like a 30-minute show. And they had clips and, and, I guess, commentary from a bunch of different people. And so me and my brother actually were on that episode. And you can probably find it on YouTube or whatever. Damn, I need to find that as well. I just thought about it probably for the first time in 10 years. Um, But the episode was called You Can't Blame Mike Tyson or the top five reasons why you can't blame Mike Tyson for losing to Buster Douglas. And they gave you like top five, the top five reasons and, like, one of the reasons was this freaking Robin Givens and all of the things that he was going through in his life. One of the reasons was because Cus D'Amato, his trainer, had died, and he had separated from uh, from Kevin Rooney, the trainer or whatever. Tony, what was the guy's name? He's a fight announcer now. So there was a bunch of different reasons. There were five reasons of why they said that you can't blame Tyson being facetious for losing to Buster Douglas. And so me and Ryan actually had a couple of little clips in there and, you know, describing, you know, that incredible night. And so uh, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. If, if you can, I'll, I'll look for it. I may have it uh, maybe in my emails or something like that, and I'll post a link in the Doug Stewart Show Facebook chat group. But that was just crazy, man. Tyson loses. Uh, Rel Scott, don't let the malice in the palace distract you from the fact that Chris Childs gave Kobe a two-piece square on the chin. (laughs) If you're new to the Doug Stewart Show, I'm a Laker fan. And, uh, yeah, yeah. You can't even say Chris Childs stole on Kobe because they were standing face-to-face. And where I'm from, (laughs) when you having a, a heated conversation like that, expect to get... You know, swung on. And uh, Chris Childs gave Kobe a two-piece. I don't think that's going to make my top five. But it was very interesting to watch. Uh, Kobe did take them shots, though, like a G. He did. (laughs) Right, he did. Uh, 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart show.com. As we mentioned in the first segment of the show, uh, Boston's 114 and 105 win over the Brooklyn Nets on Monday combined with the Cleveland Cavaliers overtime loss to Miami leaves the Celtics one game ahead in the Eastern conference with one game to play with the win, uh, over the visiting Milwaukee Bucks in Wednesday's regular season finale. The Celtics will secure the number one seed and guarantee home court advantage through the Eastern Conference. The Cavaliers host the Toronto Raptors on Wednesday night. Um, If Boston stumbles against Milwaukee, the Cavs can claim the top spot with a win. The Celtics won their first Atlantic Division title since the 2011-2012. It actually has been a lot of years uh, since they were good uh, with with KG and Paul Pierce and those guys, man, uh, Ray Allen. Um, last time they won, it was the 2011-2012 season. Uh, with Monday's win, they do it for the first time since then. Here's a quote, I've never won a division title, so yeah, uh, it means something, said Isaiah Thomas III. Uh, all these things that we're doing this year, it means a lot to us. Uh, I guess you're a young team, man. A win is a win is a win. Winning a division is winning a division is winning a division. It's a ball award, and I hate to do this, but uh, – I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save giving them a ball award. I was about to give them a ball award and have the studio audience give them a round of applause. They still can lose, and Cleveland can win. Plus, I hate the Boston Celtics almost as much as I hate the New York Knicks. Probably more now that I think about it. But Tyler Johnson scored 24 points, including the game's final four from the foul line in overtime in the Heat kept their postseason hopes alive by rallying past the Cleveland Cavaliers 124-121 to on Monday night. Uh, The Heat 
remained number nine in the Eastern Conference, a game behind number seven, Indiana at 41 and 40, and a tiebreaker behind number eight, Chicago at 40 and 41. Uh, Miami hosts Washington, which is locked into the number four spot. Chicago hosts the NBA's worst, Brooklyn, and Indiana hosts Atlanta. Atlanta's in, but Chicago is taking on Brooklyn, trying to, you know, stave off the Miami Heat for that last spot. Here's an interesting thing about last night's game, man. Deron Williams had a season-high 35 points, 9 assists, and 7 boards for the Cavaliers, who fell to 0-7 this season when LeBron James didn't play. Um, The Cavs were also without Kyrie Irving and Tristan Thompson and fell a game behind Boston, as we just talked about. James sat allegedly with a calf strain right And they went on to say that Irving has a sore left knee. And so that's what you're going to get, man. Just to, just to keep folks in the heat off their backs a little bit. Uh, instead of just resting these guys just because, like they've been doing over the last couple of years, they're going to just start attaching some little minuscule injury or ailment or whatever to these players. Kyrie Irving has a sore left knee. LeBron James has a calf strain. Right. Uh, Kevin Love scored 25 points. Shannon Fry had 21. And Kyle Corbin had 18 for Cleveland. Interesting thing about that, man, Deron Williams still got game. Like, he's kind of moved around over the last couple of years. Or Darren Williams. Uh, is it Deron? Thinking about my chapter, bro. So, Darren Williams still got game. He's been kind of moving around over the last couple of years. Uh, been with several teams in the NBA. But Darren Williams is, a like, a, an all-star type point guard. And they gave him up in a deal to come to Cleveland uh, so they could get some uh, some uh, more depth at the point guard position. And uh, he goes for 35 last night. He still can play. Like, he's an all-star caliber. Maybe he's lost a step or two. But the fact that he can still put up 35 on you, coming cold off the bench because the starter doesn't go, um, that says a lot. Why do they... Let me see. So they got the depth chart is who? who the point guard for Cleveland is Kyrie. Um, their two guard is J.R. Smith. Like, and the reason why Kyrie, they have him listed as a point guard is because he's short. And I guess he is a point guard. He's probably played that his entire life. But Kyrie is more so a two guard. He's a scoring guard. I um, wonder would that work? A starting lineup of Darren Williams at the point, Kyrie at the two. J.R. Smith is the, is the starting two guard right now. And you know, Kyrie is a better player than J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith could give you some depth off the bench. So I wonder if they'd ever t- uh, tinkered with putting Darren Williams in as a starter, um, moving Kyrie to the two. That bring J.R. Smith off the bench. You know, LeBron's obviously at the small forward, Kevin Love at the power, and Tristan Thompson at the center. I mean, you got an all star first team uh, starting point guard for 90% of the NBA on your bench. And and maybe it doesn't even matter the minutes that they get or whatever. Uh, it still works. But I don't know. Interesting, man. Uh, bottom line is Darren Williams still got game. So if they can implement him, man, and get some, some quality minutes, some quality playing time out of him in the playoffs, uh, that's going to make them even that much harder to beat. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, very interesting. These playoffs are going to be very, very interesting this year. Uh, give us a call. Give us your thoughts, 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com from Clay YC Squidward Davis. He says, Rail, Chris Childs, Sneak Punch Vino. Yeah, I wouldn't put it in that category. They were standing face to face. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, I've always been taught in that situation that you swing first. <laughs> Uh, I, I can hear my uncle right now telling me, my uncle Donnie right now, Doug, when you get in front of a man like that, you better swing first. <laughs> no lie. You better swing first, nephew. Don't let him get a clean shot off on you. Nah, nah, I don't think that he stole on him. From Grego, he says, uh, Junior Gallette got tasered and arrested for fighting at some weekend at the beach for blacks in, Mis- for blacks in Mississippi. 
Stupid. Um, and I heard about that story. Junior Gallette, defensive end for who does he play for the Saints? He's done that a couple of times. There's this video out there of him, like, whipping the shit out of some girl at a beach party a couple of years ago. Like, he's a beach party menace. <laughs> Junior Gallette, Beach Party Minutes. From Thorny Switch, now that I think about it, Steven Jackson definitely didn't have on draws when I saw him. Look at God. See, see, Thorny, this is why, this is why we have so many issues on Woman Wednesday. For comments just like that. From 334 Bam Boy, John Cheney trying to beat Cal. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Does that make my list? Yeah. You know what? What I'm probably going to have to do is I'm just going to write down some things that I think would qualify that were very shocking to me in sports over my last 40-something years of being able to understand and watch sports. And then we'll, we'll strike things off and we'll come up with the top five. Yeah. Yeah classic shocking moment where 60 70 year old John Cheney wanted to whip the shit out of John Calipari and the crazy thing about that I'm writing it down right now the crazy thing about that is that me and most sports fans wanted to see it happen Oh, man. And listen, Calipari was much younger. John Chaney, though, got that dog in him. And I just knew if I could put a bet on him, man, I would wager all my money that John Calipari was going to take a beating that day from that old man. I'm telling you, that was a great clip. Awesome. I like it. I like it. So that makes my list as well. Uh, Post-game press conference, John Calipari, you know, the most condescending. John Calipari is like the like the Danny Ainge of coaching, of college basketball coaching. It's just his, his, his whole persona is just swarmy, condescending, punkish. And John Chaney had enough. I like it. That makes my list as well. All right, when we get back from the break, man, um, a little bit more NBA talk. James Harden last night struggles. We'll talk about that. And also, man, Miles Garrett, probably going to be the number one pick in the draft, going to get about $30 million bonus money to sign. Uh, Miles Garrett kind of sensitive. He kind of like Ralph Tresvan. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll talk about it up next on the Doug Stewart Show. We'll read more of your chat as well. Don't go away. Hour number two coming up next. And yes, it was a young suitor from out to the bunch. She's going to eat him for lunch. You know she's got an eye. And it mean a suitor from out to the bunch. But he just noticed the one chick that's looking fine. Like a typical case of the lane lines. He leaned in slightly, she's the 